Hey my ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome back to the Hermit's Cave. So I wasn't planning on coming on uh, this morning, but a little bit of a surprise. Yesterday I got a uh, an email notification saying your delivery is scheduled between, I think, I don't know, 10.36 and 12.36 tomorrow. And I thought, well, that's strange because I don't, I'm not waiting on anything. I don't remember ordering anything. Nobody has said that they're sending anything and everything that I was expecting I'd received. So I was really surprised because there was just a knock at the door about half an hour ago and the postman gave me a package and inside was these two decks from Living on Eleven. Uh, this Might Hurt and The Citadel, uh, a fantasy oracle it's called now. Now, the Citadel, I will do a separate um, walkthrough because I, I wanted to focus on This Might Hurt and the differences between um, the independently produced and the mass market version. So the Citadel originally, and these beautiful collection tins that you can get, I've got five now for Modern, modern Day Witch. I've got it for this one, which is the Seed and Sickle. Uh, cosmic slumber etc um, and they are well worth the money they have beautiful uh, bags and this one has a journal uh, but you'll see the deck here seed and sickle and then the citadel deck was like um, in this version um, was a a special kind of add-on if you if you bought the set rather than just the deck and it was really beautiful just stunning in this kind of rose gold, uh, cold stamping, etc. But it looks like they've taken this little, and I mean, it is it is Diddy compared to what it looks like it's going to be here, a uh, hexagon shaped um, little oracle deck with this kind of fold out book and created it as a separate and their usual you know, high quality for mass market um, in a deck format, which looks like it now will have a book and, and everything else. So I'm excited to take a look at that and I'll leave this out and I'll do a bit of a comparison. Uh, probably tomorrow we'll, we'll take a look at that. I've got my live later today. But I'm really interesting to, uh, re interested to see um, what they've done with This Might Hurt because I haven't seen any walkthroughs of this yet. Um, super excited for it because this is a deck that I love so much so I have uh, there is a difference to see the difference here even though um, these are both independently produced we've got first edition and second edition first edition I have in a Kelly pouch and it's got a little B you know this might hurt a little B <laughs> um, and oh, it's gorgeous with the colours. And this deck is the one that has the uh, black, look at that, black multicoloured cardstock. Is beautiful. These are the backs. Ah, oh, I love this deck. This was huge around, I want to say 2019. I think this came out in 2019. So it's been out for four years now. Amazing artwork, wonderful, diverse deck. Um, and yeah, it's it's gorgeous. Everything about it, I love. So when they released a second edition, which had this kind of pearl, look at that, has this, um, I think they called it pearl essence, but it's kind of like the metallic silver, which has this kind of multicolored, um effect to it again no changes to the artwork or anything like that no compromise on the cardstock cardstock is still that lovely soft matte but particularly under a light like this i mean it's just a stunning deck so when i heard that it was being picked up for mass market release by lemon 11 i was super excited and the reason why I'm so excited is for the reasons that I've mentioned. Um, Limited 11, so far, with the decks that they've sent me, uh, particularly tarot decks, 
have come in really good quality um, packaging. Cardstock is exceptional and you do feel like you're getting an indie version anyway. Um, they re-released, the first deck I ever got from Liminal 11 was the Lunar Soul. Grab the scissors. It was the Lunar Soul Tarot and it was in a little tuck box and then they re-released it um, a couple of years ago now um, in this new kind of format, which has become um, their standard. I'm struggling to get in this. Let me... Uh, I just need to find a way in. Okay. <laughs> it is sealed quite, quite tightly. I don't want to damage it in any way. There we go. Once you've got that little tear, it's pretty easy. Yeah, so their, the quality of their decks are quite uniform now. You get this gorgeous um, outer box. It has a flap at the bottom. Originally, I think one of the first one didn't have this flap. So when you picked it up, the bottom came out, but they rectified that. They put this magnetic bottom. Nothing's coming out of there. It's really, really strong, very sturdy. As you can see, it says this might hurt. Temperance on the side. We've got two of swords on the back. You can see some of the artwork. Uh, we have our hanged man. He's such a character. Um, and strength on the front there. So when you open it up, you get this design. That might be the back design. And then an inner box as well that slides out like that. And this is the inside. The attention to detail is wonderful. And this is almost wooden. Very sturdy hard card box beautiful they put lots of packaging in to protect the cards so i'll just take that out i don't keep it in there we have got a little book which is great because um in fact let's let's sit down and compare it oh it looks like the cards have gone a little bit glossier um so let's compare this so we've got our world card there look Take out the little black book here. Um, so this one is fully, I mean, it's in black and white. It's quite a thick book. And there is 170, 180 pages. This is a little bit bigger, as you can see. It looks to be a little bit thinner, but it's a colour book now. So we've got a colour guide book, full colour rendition of the artwork. Oh, that's nice. Um, look at that. Sterling job. Uh, it's 137. So I'm just seeing, let's go to Nine of Swords and Ten of Swords, just to see if there is a difference here. Nine of Swords and Ten of Swords. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit sh uh, smaller. So in the indie, you've got a black and white image of the card, the Nine of Swords, and then a page of writing. Here, you've got the same text, more or less. This starts off with nine swords surround the head of a woman, nine swords surround the head of a woman. We've got crisis of mental health, crisis of mental health, but here it says, the Eight of Swords teaches us. So there, that's obviously an error there. When the Nine of Swords comes, remember coping. So any errors that were here before have uh, been corrected for, for this book. Eight, don't waste time blaming yourself. Eight, don't waste time blaming yourself. Yeah, so we still get images from the cards, but what they've done is it's kind of like, almost like a watermark, like a ghostly impression. So if we look at Seven of Swords here, trying to do this with one hand isn't helpful. So you see, whereas we get the black and white image in the text, for here, it's the same card, but it's in the background. Okay, same with, just show you. 
gosh, holding two books, one in each hand, you get the image there, but you see the image in the background of the card here. So it's cleverly done for the miners. I like that. And it does save on space, but they're not skimping on the text. So Isabella Rotman's um, words are still here. Um, we've got a little bit about each of the cups and the minor arcana, the suitor ones, the suitor cups, the suitor swords and suitor pen uh, pentacles. We get a little bit about numerology here, ace through to ten. Um, we get about the courts, pages, knights, queens and kings. Um, so lots of information. And then for the major arcana, we get a full colour image on one side and the writing on the other. Okay, so that's the little booklets. Um, I want to look at the cards. Um, they seem to be thicker in the mass market um, edition. Um, however, they are more matte in the indie. This one has a, um, I wouldn't say a gloss, it's not a heavy gloss, but there is a shiny surface here compared to this. Do you see? You can see the ring there reflected, whereas on here it's just, it's more matte cards are exactly the same size and then there is the difference with the back so a stark black and white on the indie and then this blue and green color but same design completely the same design uh, on the mass market so what i'm going to do i don't think there's going to be any differences but i'm going to pause the camera and put this in order um and we'll put that there so you know that we're referring to the indie version. And we'll put this here for the mass market. Okay, so they're all in order. Um, just to say as well, because I forgot to say at the beginning, this deck is obviously an advanced copy because when I've checked, this isn't being released until June and we're in February, so there's still a bit of a way to go. I think you can pre-order, it's called the Standard Edition, uh, because there is a limited edition. Um, and, you know, I don't have the limited edition, so I couldn't tell you what you get in the limited edition. But the Standard Edition is fantastic. Uh, I'm really impressed with the design and everything. Um, in terms of, as I mentioned, this is a little deck is a bit thicker than the in fact let's see up to the hermit so there's a difference of nine cards one two three four five six seven eight nine cards thickness um other than that from what i've seen so far which i'm pleased about it doesn't look like um the artwork has changed the color saturation seems pretty much the same you can tell a slight difference when we look at the satchel here of our fall. It's more of a, a kind of a, a reddy brown, whereas this is more of a kind of pale brown. But, you know, it's minuscule. The difference is minuscule. The main difference is obviously the change to the backs. And also uh, these have a, as I said, it's not a heavy gloss lamination. It's a very slight lamination. Um, but they are very springy and very durable. And the cardstock, as I mentioned from Lemon 11, Lemon 11, like the whole production is quality. So let's have a look through. And it's, it's nice to have the opportunity to reconnect with this deck because this is a deck I couldn't put down um, throughout 2019 and probably into 2020, if truth be known. Um, it was a favourite of mine and I used it a lot. And that's why I, not just because I wanted the different edging, I wanted a backup edition. So when I knew, because you could get a gold edged version as well, when I knew that there was um, a second edition out. So the first edition was either black or gold edged and you had a choice, I went for the black because I'd never seen anything like that at the time. Um, and then 
they brought out a second edition which has the pearlescent edges. Um, and I thought, yeah, I need a backup because I'm using this this one to death. So this is my backup. It hasn't been used a lot, only a couple of times. However, this one's had some serious use. So while we're talking about edges, this edition, I don't know if the limited edition has ed if it's edged, but this standard edition isn't edged. So you've got the choice there if you want to keep it white, which I probably will, because it's got white borders on both sides and it's a clean white. It's not a gray card. It's quite a bright, brilliant white actually. And I really like it. It looks really clean and fresh. Um, so I don't think I will add, edge this deck. A Hierophant there. Love that Hierophant card. So, um, what I do know about the limited edition um, is that there is an Oracle deck that comes with that, I think. Uh, I think it has the symbols from within this deck and it's called This Might Help. So we've got This Might Hurt Tarot and This Might Help, uh, which is an Oracle deck take using the sim symbolism. Um, I hope that Living and Eleven sell that separately as well, because obviously um, it's something that I'd want to get, but now I've got this edition, I don't need another copy of this to get it. But I couldn't tell you if that's the case at the moment. So yeah, again, just a little bit, a little bit saturated here. Um, it's, you know, it's not as intense, the redness of the lion's mane there. I love that we have this female hermit. I need to go a little bit quicker actually because there are walkthroughs of this deck. I just wanted to um, kind of talk about the differences. And I always love it when there is a favorite deck, one of my favorite decks that gets picked up by a publisher because then it's more, it becomes more accessible. More people can get it because not everybody can afford to buy independently produced decks. It was quite an investment for me to buy those. But luckily, um, they were sold through Little Red Tarot. So um, I was able to save a bit on postage at least. There is nudity in the deck. If that's not your thing, then uh, they make no apologies for it. I do love this moon card. I think it is amazing. And I love this Anubis character weighing the heart and the feather out. The judgment, well, perfect judgment card. Fantastic. You can see the difference in skin tones here. It's slight. Uh, this this one actually does have a more kind of, the colors seem a little bit more natural, the red of the lion's mane, etc. And, and some of the skin tones seem a little bit more natural colored. Okay, so the miners are color themed as well. So we do get these kind of orangey browns, like a burnt sienna tone to really represent the fiery element of the ones who love this. Love it. We get these hounds fighting here over the sticks. quite a noticeable change in colour and saturation of clothing there. One looks almost red and the other orange. We do have, oh, where's my, got that the wrong way around. Let me just see where the night is underneath. So we do use the traditional page 
knight, queen, and king, which I like. Even though this is a modern deck following the tradition of RWS, um, I like the fact that, you know, it's, it's kept all of the, the titles in the traditional sense. I think the colour tone, the colour palette for the cups is absolutely beautiful. A look at this two of cups. Wonderful. <laughs> and I love, I mentioned it when I did a walkthrough of the original. You know, I often used to see the four of cups, not somebody who's kind of nonchalant or down in the dumps, but somebody who was, you know, like the Buddha sitting under a tree and meditating and, you know, but sometimes you can be so heavenly minded that you're not really of an earthly use and you're not seeing what's in front of you. Uh, so this illustrates uh, that really well. I love her expression. Huh? Really smashed and in pieces here, these cups, the glass goblets. And all the cups are different vessels throughout the, the whole suit. I love how the fish factors into this page of cups. Notice the knights are all riding motorbikes. And this King of Cups, I adore this King of Cups. I mean, just, just look. Then we have our swords. I know a lot of people didn't like this image. interesting that you know Lemon and Eleven and Isabella Rotman have, have stayed very true to the original um, release and you know stood by their choices whether you know the the community have appreciated all the images or not and um, no cards certainly so far that I've seen have changed at all for the mass market release. I mean, just look as well, the, the king and queens, you know, they're not, they're not perfect. They're not body beautifuls. They're not um, of a certain age or style. You know, they are everyday, everyday people from all walks of life. Even though we're using kind of, uh, you know, a court system, um, it's still how it's represented, how it's interpreted that's that's key for me. These stonemasons working away, these sculptors. Oh, really like the, the five. It's a powerful image. I love this scene. It's very RWS, but it's very cleaned up. It's very crisp and clean. You can really see the image. The difference, of course, is the, the pentacles here aren't forming the uh, Kabbalah Tree of Life, but gorgeous nonetheless. So we have an additional card. Wow, it's a reversible card. 
It almost looks like a, it could be another strength card. I mean, you could take that, even though it's an infinity symbol, on the side, it's an infinity symbol. Uh, but that way, it is an eight. Oh, I see. They're not reversible. Here you've got somebody that's... I like this. It reminds me of the coin I've got from Stephanie, Stephanie Burroughs, where you have a, a hair on one side that's asleep and another one that's alert. So, you know, you could shuffle this in and depending on which way up it comes, I love the way they've put the, the infinity symbol like that. You know, you've got a very serene image here. They're both sleeping, uh, you know, they're holding each other. It's very harmonious. Whereas here, it's very fraught. You know, she's trying to uh, prise the jaw open, look at the anguish on her face. It's, it's almost like a wrestle. It is a, it, they are wrestling rather than uh, being at peace here. I love that. I mean, obviously the book will tell us what that's about. And, you know, if you did want to use it, um, and, you know, however you want to use it, you could use it for um, shadow and uh, light aspects. Um, you could use it as a significator card. You could shuffle it into the deck. Now this is your significator card. There's lots of options uh, for this card here. Okay, so I've just found it in the book. So this card is, this might hurt, this might heal. And it says, a girl and a wolf cycle between tender affection and a difficult struggle. In the upright position, the girl tenderly holds the wolf. In the downward position, the girl and the wolf are locked in a desperate battle. The figures are cyclical with the four symbols of the major arcana in the corners. Of course, I didn't even notice that. Cups, pentacles, yeah. Um, where did I go up to? In the four, uh, four corners, suggesting that the struggle and peace are temporary positions in a never ending cycle. The wolf represents the external world. Risk is inherent in a well-lived life. There will be vibrant joy, crushing pain, and multitudes in between. All experiences that are meaningful, that are truly joyful, can also bring you the most pain. In the downward position, with the girl and wolf fighting at the top, it suggests a time of great difficulty. The external world has bitten you. Times are hard and you are reacting to that hardship in order to return to equilibrium. Acceptance is key. If you fight what has happened to you, blame yourself or refuse to recognise what is going on, you will add to your own suffering. Accept what has happened and you can become a stronger person on the other side, able to form meaningful bonds with those who have a similar experience or who have had similar experiences. In the upright position, with the girl and the wolf at peace at the top, it suggests a time of healing. Humans are social animals that evolve to thrive in community. Connection is the key to our survival and our highest goal. And it is a connection with others and the world around you that will facilitate growth. Take care of your people, love your world, and you will also be taking care and loving yourself. That is wonderful. I love that card. I mean, I don't read reversals, so I'm not sure how I'll use it. I think I might just use this as a significator. With it being a 79th card, I think I'll, you know, shuffle it within the deck and see what comes before and what comes after when I do a, a, a card pull. So there you have it. This is This Might Hurt by Isabella Rotman, uh, produced by Liminal 11. Um, putting that a little bit too high there. Wonderful, wonderful version. I'm so glad that this deck that I love so much, um, you know, is being made uh, more accessible, becoming more accessible so that you can, um, you can get it at an affordable uh, price. 
All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. I will be back tonight to do a cup of ketchup and card. So hopefully you'll be able to join me then. Until then, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.